brought to you by the community of certified B Corporations. So my name is Vince, and I was raised in Washington, D.C. to be a master of the universe. A master of the universe is someone that's always right, always the smartest person in the room, and always successful. My father worked for several presidents. Uh, that's that bright-eyed kid on the back wall. Obviously, Eisenhower should have had his hand on my head, not my brother's head. Uh, uh, <laughs> and... Um, but anyway, you see, my, you see my smiley face there. So it really was a time of privilege for me in my life, rolling uh, Easter eggs in the White House lawn, and a time of very high expectations. High expectations, which meant that I, I could do anything I wanted, and I should do something that was really high and great. And that led to this burden of, of expectations and ultimately becoming an approval addict, an achievement addict. In college, my horizons expanded. That's my wife there. And I learned to smoke other substances, which also helped with my expanding awareness. You would understand that here in Colorado, I think. Um, but I found out that the military industrial complex wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. And this photograph was not seen for 30 years. It's the two of us being chased by police, crossing a fence at Stanford, protesting the uh, Vietnam War. Now, of course, everybody laughs at it. At the time, it was potentially career wrecking. Accidentally, I became a banker, and I, 40 years later, I'm still a banker. But living in Asia for seven years was really terrific because, you know, Americans, we think we're number one in the world. Boy, go to China, go to a lot of other countries. They're all terrific. They're all absolutely incredible. So failure. I have been fired twice. I've had companies not do well. And theoretically, failure would lead to humility. But in my case, given that I was a master of the universe, uh, failure is not even in the language. So failure really led to depression for me because I'm not supposed to fail, I'm only supposed to succeed. And the root of that depression was the idea that my sense of self-worth was rooted in my accomplishments and the approval of others. In other words, uh, you are what you, what you own, what you do, and what other people think of you. And uh, this was money, sex, and power, having lots of money, that was all that I was brought up to be. But when I when I ended up failing, that really uh, pulled the rug out from under me, and I had to look somewhere else. And what I discovered was that the kind of economy we grow in, we, we live up, the competitive capitalistic economy is an ego-based economy that's all about competition. I'm better than you. I, I put you down. I separate. I contrast. I compare. I'm high. You're low. It's all about pride and fear in that economy. Whereas in the eco economy, now we get into our inter interdependence and we discover our connections to nature, to spirit, to purpose, to values, to community. Uh, it's quite a quite a contrast. Uh, out of uh, out of the inner out of the inner journey comes an outpouring of of generosity and community and stewardship and a sense of purpose in life to help others achieve well-being for themselves and for the communities that they live in. The core engine in the eco economy is collaboration as opposed to competition. Sure, we still compete, but we do it in an overarching kind of way that uh, is respectful, that has mindful business and conscious leadership uh, as well. So for me, I found that living in an eco-based economy was a better way for me to achieve well-being in my life and to have a sense of purpose in my life. Still work in the marketplace, use the marketplace, not be used by and defined by the marketplace. So from this vantage point now, I can step out of the rat race. Uh, I can become a human being rather than a human doing. And as Lily Tomlin once said, the problem with winning the rat race is you're still a rat. <laughs> so let's boil this down to something very practical, money. So money was the metric of success. Money was my, uh, the way I define my own value in the world. And uh, obviously I now know that's tr not true, but I want to ask you that question. What is money to you? What is your relationship to money? What is your relationship to this idea of ego versus eco? And I think that's a battle that we never completely win. We're always struggling back and forth between those. And money is, not an money is not the definition of your value as a person. It's an expression of your values. And I think most of you probably know that. And you try to buy organic food and the right kind of cars and the right kind of consumer goods. But beyond that, uh, what, about, what, what do you do with banking and investments? Uh, do you buy organic peanut butter, but do you bank with an organic bank? Do you use ethical investments? So it, it's a... It's a it's a drive for these kinds of value expressions that should go through our whole lives. And in particular, I like to ask the question, do you know where your money spends the night? 
If you're like this guy, it's probably not in your bed. Uh, and I assure you, it's not in a bank vault somewhere. It's out in the world. So if you had a dollar bill and you could imagine it being a little magic carpet and you could ride around the world seeing where your money spent the night, not sleeps, by the way, would you be proud? So I leave you with this thought about what's the eco versus ego battle like for you, and have you really explored the expression of everything you do uh, in terms of the values of your life? Thank you very much.